there are around 14,500 orangutans in Sumatra. Uh, we now know that around 800 of those are Tapanuli orangutans, so the Sumatran orangutan population is considered to be around 13,600 or so. With increasing pressure on the conservation areas, on the protected forests, because people are looking for ways to open them up and uh, you know build new infrastructure and new roads that will cross them and open it up open up access into these what previously were always off limits one of our biggest challenges now is not necessarily losses of hundreds of thousands of hectares but actually fragmentation and roads being cut across what it, what is remaining and chopping these populations in half and into smaller uh, areas in a place like Aceh where the, most of the Loser ecosystem there's only four million people living in the entire province but those four million people actually depend on what comes out of this Loser ecosystem. Imagine a company comes in and clears 10, 15,000 hectares within six months. Where do the orangutans go? Well, they may find their way to some healthy forest somewhere nearby if there is any, but the chances are that's already got a population of orangutans at carrying capacity, and there's only so much food to go around, so they will all start to get malnutrition and, and hungry and die of starvation or they will come out and they'll start raiding crops and bump into people with guns and machetes and clubs and they'll get beaten up or shot and killed. Uh, and it's that's, that kind of thing that causes the pet trade. The best way actually to rehabilitate orangutan is just uh, take them out of the cage and uh, let them in the forest school. So they will learn in the forest how to climb, how to uh, move from one tree to another. We want to make sure that once we uh, bring them back to the forest, they uh, survive in the forest and they continue to have their generation in the forest. That's, that's the aim of these programs. Orangutan is a national treasure. It is protected by uh, law in Indonesia. But on the other uh, side, uh, there is also a lot of threats for the orangutans. Like people still uh, hunt them uh, for the wildlife trade or kept as an illegal pet or smuggling. This is where most of the orangutans that come to our quarantine centre near Medan and are brought to the orangutans again, this is where they eventually end up and uh, they're eventually given a chance to be wild orangutans again. The carrying capacity of this forest is way in excess of the 350 or 500 that we really need. We have a very high density of fig trees. They're not all the species that orangutans really crave, uh, but they're all fallback foods and survival foods. And uh, the other thing that they need to learn usually is, is insects. You know, in Sumatra here, especially uh, termites and ants plays a big role in their diet. And uh, most of the orangutans here actually do figure that one out pretty quick. Now we've released, I think, uh, with the last five that came up last week, uh, 125 now here. Not all of them make it. We think we've got a, about a 70% success rate. At any one time, there's about 15, 16 uh, staff here. We have a station manager, we have a, a cook, uh, we have a full-time vet, and then we have a whole bunch of uh, field assistants. Now, those guys are either looking after the, the orangutans that are waiting to be released and giving them all their provisions in the cages and training them in some of the forest fruits, and the other guys are actually following and monitoring the orangutans that we've already released. Wenda actually is very interesting because she was released here several years ago and never really ventured very far. And she was always a thin animal and I always thought mm, there's a chance she's not going to make it. Now we are, I think, about five or six years later and we've just seen her and she's looking pretty good and she's obviously making a go of it. She's almost old enough now, I think, to, to be getting pregnant. And when she does that, she'll put on weight and become a proper fully adult female. We always knew when we started to reintroduce orangutans here, it would be quite a while before we saw infants being born. That's because most of the orangutans we release are around six, seven years old. The real thrill here, when uh, I got a message in September 2017, uh, and the guy said that a female called Marconi had come back into camp. We hadn't seen her for, for about three years, and uh, with an infant. And this infant was a young male, about 11 months old, later called um, uh, Masen. And um, then a month later again, we had another one called Monkey come back with a younger female, with a female only about uh, three weeks old, uh, later called Mame, I think. These are the new generation. This is 
exactly what we want. These are the very first founders of this brand new wild population. We need another 10 to 15 years to actually uh, see that home and, and be in a situation where we knew if we, if we stopped releasing in those populations, those populations are good. 20 years ago, when, when I first started this project, you know, the goal was just slow down the decline. You know? um, nowadays, I see opportunities to not only slow it down, but to actually start reversing it. Um, I think we're at the cusp here of being able to do that. It still has a long way to go, but I think if we can just keep these populations fairly as stable as we can, over the next 20 to 30 years, we will actually see new opportunities for maybe even expanding habitat areas and reconnecting the fragmented forest.